So today's class will start with uh, high performance liquid chromatography. This is one of the two highly common techniques of chromatography that is used today. Uh, the other being gas chromatography. So uh, this is also a very sophisticated technique, require quite expensive also. So you will see later, it is also known by one more name. Uh, that's not the official name, but it is also known like that because of, it is very expensive. So before we go into high performance liquid chromatography or HPLC, we need to know what is liquid chromatography and then we'll go into high performance because high performance liquid chromatography is actually liquid chromatography in high performance mode. So the liquid chromatography is a versatile technique that is available to all analysts. And it's also a simple method. So you know what is liquid chromatography by now. It's a column chromatography in which mobile phase is a liquid. So the separation could be based on any type of uh, separation, like any principle like adsorption, partition, ion exchange, gel chromatography, gel filtration, anything can be uh, there. Um, so any method that uses a liquid mobile phase is called a liquid chromatographic technique, and it is done in column. So separations are caused by diverse characteristics like polarity of the solutes, you can say uh, that means uh, adsorption partition, ionic nature, which refers to uh, ion exchange chromatography, molecular weight, which refers to molecular sieving or gel chromatography, partitioning ability, which is particularly uh, referring to column liquid chromatography, and ability to form affinity complexes that refers to affinity chromatography. The method liquid, the word liquid chromatography used today is the method in which separation takes place in a packed column. So what I just told you now, it is a column chromatographic technique where a liquid is used as the mobile phase. So what is stationary phase? Stationary phase may be a solid or an inert support that is coated with a liquid phase. So the first one would lead to column adsorption, second one would lead to column partition. A liquid mobile phase should be used as eluent or mobile phase. Uh, these are carried out in glass columns. You can see the diameters, one to five centimeters, because this is where the difference will be seen when you are dealing with high performance. So that is why uh, this comparison I have given you. Um, the size of uh, the length will be around 50 to 500 centimeter. Size of the solid particle in stationary phase would have di particle diameters of 150 to 200 micrometer. This is a vast difference you will see in HPLC. So in a liquid chromatography, particle size 150 to 200 micrometer. Diameter of the column is 1 to 5 centimeters and length is 50 to 500 centimeters. The flow rate, of course, is low. Separation time, therefore, takes much longer. This is the diagram of a column chromatography. So high performance liquid chromatography, also called high pressure liquid chromatography, also called high priced liquid chromatography. Why? Because in this, pressure will be used to make the mobile phase pass through the column. Why is the third name high priced? Because it's a very expensive technique. So now we come actually to high performance liquid chromatography, HPLC, the most widely used technique for analytical separations. Presently, it's the most widely used technique. It utilizes a liquid mobile phase to separate components of mixture because it's a liquid chromatography. It also uses high pressure to push the solvent through the column. 
So this is the unique feature of high performance liquid chromatography where the mobile phase is under pressure when it moves through the stationary phase. And why is high performance liquid chromatography so popular? Its popularity could be related to sensitivity because the sensitivity of this technique is very high. What do you mean by sensitivity being high? It means very small quantities of substance can be detected, determined, estimated by this technique. Or the limit of detection, limit of quantification is quite low. Uh, in the sense, the amount that can be detected is very low. Um, so high performance liquid chromatography has a high sensitivity. It is also suitable for separating non-volatile species. Now, this is a direct comparison with the other very uh, popular technique that's gas chromatography, but there, it, there is a limitation. Non-volatile substances cannot be separated. Whereas in high-performance liquid chromatography, this restriction is not there. Any type of substance, whether volatile or non-volatile, can be separated. Then it also has widespread applicability to substances that are of prime interest to industry, to many fields of science. You will be seeing subsequently, uh, it can be used in pharmaceuticals, it can be used in food industry, it can be used in environmental analysis, various, that is what is referred here as many fields of separation. Uh, it's also ideally suited for separation and identification of amino acids, proteins, nucleic acids, hydrocarbons, carbohydrates, pharmaceuticals, pesticides, pigments, antibiotics, steroids, and a wide variety of uh, inorganic substances. You can see a lot of uh, substances can come under this category. The advantages to HPLC. So you have, I have listed out a number of advantages. We'll go through each one of it. Higher resolution and high speed of analysis. I think you will all understand what is high speed of analysis. The analysis is completed in a short time. High resolution means, say there are two components in your mixture. The two components will be clearly separated. If you talk about elution, you now know what is elution. Elution means taking out of the uh, out the component from the stationary phase, because initial separation of the components is always on the stationary phase, and when you elute it, the components are removed from the stationary phase. So this is uh, uh, if this separation of the components, that is component A comes out then you have only mobile phase coming out, then you have component B coming out. This is a clear separation of both the components. If this is true, then we say the resolution is high. Resolution of separation is high. So that's what is given by HPLC. So it's an advantage of HPLC. We want complete separation of all the components. Then you have HPLC component uh, columns can be reused without repacking or regeneration. Now, this is an advantage, particularly over something like paper chromatography. You will have to discard the paper. That means the stationary phase is, once the separation is done, you cannot reuse the stationary phase. Whereas HPLC columns, the stationary phase can be cleaned by passing the mobile phase without any substances, pure mobile phase continuously, or you can use some cleaning uh, liquids like water, methanol mixtures to pass through depending on what type of column you have. And uh, you can get a renewed stationary phase again. So you don't have to pack the column again and again. This may is more seen in liquid chromatography where the column will have to be packed again after one usage. You don't have to regenerate like in ion exchange chromatography where regeneration of the original form is required to have a second uh, separation. 
Uh, the third advantage is greater reproducibility due to close control of the parameters affecting the efficiency of separation. Now, efficiency of separation is affected by various parameters. Um, I think you would have gone through it when you had the general chromatography session. Um, so I will just uh, name a few of those uh, factors which affect the efficiency of separation, like the uh, length of column, the type of packing, the particle size of packing, the surface area of stationary phase available, um, the application of the sample. So these are certain variables which affect the reproducibility. In case of HPLC, since uh, the packing is not done by, in the lab, it is commercially available columns with packed stationary phase. So the packing is very uniform. It's very small particle size, gives a high surface area, so the resolutions are much better. Now, since you have more uniform particle size and uniform packing, you will get better reproducibility. That means same results on subsequent injections of the same sample. That is called reproducibility being high. So this you can achieve in case of HPLC mainly because all the various parameters are very strictly controlled. And uh, so we get this advantage. The next one is easy automation of instrument operation and data analysis. Now, uh, the instrument, uh, operating the instrument and then collecting data, like what is the uh, area under the curve from which we can then find out how much of the substance was present, which is the substance, identifying the substance. So these are all automatic because you have the software performing all these. So it is very easy to get the results also. You don't have to sit and calculate like in column chromatic. And it can be adapted to large scale as well as preparative procedures. The advantages of HPLC, what all we saw in the last slide, are a result of two major advantages, advances compared to a liquid chromatography. What are the two major changes that were done to give such good results? The stationary supports with very small particle sizes and large surface area. So you have either the stationary phase or the stationary phase, uh, sup, uh, support. See, uh, you can have two types of solids. Either the solid serves as the stationary phase or the solid serves as a support for the stationary phase. Whichever it is, when it, the solid has very small particle size, it gives rise to large surface area. So suppose the solid itself is acting as a stationary phase, then the stationary phase which will have a large surface area. If the surface area available for adsorption is large, then lesser um, amount of the stationary phase would be required for complete separation. Suppose you're having a liquid stationary phase, then the same thing applies to the support material. The support material has got a larger surface area, then more of liquid stationary phase can adhere to its surface. More liquid stationary phase is there, more sample can be dissolved. And so smaller um, columns would be sufficient to get a given separation. The second uh, feature is applying high pressure to solvent flow. Now, this is the other uh, feature of HPLC, which gives rise to such excellent separation results. Now, if you see the differences between liquid chromatography and HPLC, you will, uh, and why liquid chromatography has such low uh, separation results as compared to HPLC, or why HPLC has such good results, and why it's called high performance. The only ch major changes that are done are these two, that is 
regarding the stationary phase having very small particle size and secondly using pressure for mobile phase flow why this cannot be adopted in liquid chromatography or why it was not adopted in liquid chromatography in liquid chromatography if you if you remember i first put that in the earlier slides 100 to 250 micrometer particle size okay Whereas in HPLC, the starting one was 10 micrometer, which is now not used at all. It has almost become obsolete. It's only used in the preparative scale. In the analytical uh, experiments, now at present, it is going to less than 5 microns. That means more commonly, it's the 3 microns. A little uh, way back, it was the 5 micrometer, which was very common. So it's almost like uh, 15, 20 years back, it was... 10 micrometer that was very commonly used okay uh, so where is 10 my even if we consider 10 micrometer where is 10 micrometer and where's 100 or 250 micrometer which is used in liquid chromatography now this big difference why why don't we use 10 micrometer in liquid chromatography because it will give rise to problems what is that problem it is flow rate becomes very slow as the particle size of the stationary phase becomes smaller and smaller you will see that when you pack it into a column the pores between the particle size will also reduce imagine keep balls big balls you are keeping together you are arranging them together in between you will see the pores the space in between the balls spherical balls so those are big if the balls are of big size. If the balls become smaller in size, you will see the pores between the spheres, they also become small. This is what happens here also. In liquid chromatography, the pore sizes are big. If you make the particle size small, then the pore sizes also reduce. Imagine 10 micrometer, that's a very small particle size because one micrometer is very small it's one thousand of a millimeter a millimeter is one small division on your scale if you divide that one millimeter into thousand parts that would be one micrometer and ten times that okay so hundred divisions of the of one millimeter will give you ten micrometer you can't even imagine that small size now that is the size of your particle so the pores in between the particles will be still smaller. So when the pores become very small, the liquid will not flow through it fast enough. If the liquid does not flow fast enough, then analysis will be very slow. It is not only analysis time is increased, it is also going to lead to other problems like zone spreading or band spreading in the column. When a band of component spreads, then there is high chances it is going to overlap the next band, either before it or after it. So there are a number of bands of different components on separation found in a column. If each of the bands starts spreading because the solvent remains in contact for a longer time, then each of the band will overlap or mix up with the adjacent bands on the upper side as well as the lower side. This leads to poor separation and that's how the resolution goes down. That is the reason why there was a restriction of 100 micrometer for liquid chromatography. So how is it that we can go for 10 micrometer particle size in HPLC? That's because of the second advance. We see here the solvent is not moving under atmospheric pressure as in liquid chromatography. The solvent is forced through the stationary phase under pressure. So you apply high pressure and make the solvent go through. So the solvent will go through at a faster rate. All your problems that we saw earlier, that is band spreading and analysis time being high, all that is now eliminated. So that's how HPLC becomes such a popular technique, giving rise to such good, excellent results.
Now the different types of HPLC. We can have various types of HPLC um, and this type, and it can be classified based on the modes of chromatography. We will see each one of these. The principle of chromatography, you could classify HPLC based on the elution techniques. You can classify HPLC based on the scale of operation and the type of analysis. Out of all these, this would be most uh, common, just like any chromatographic classification based on the principle is the most accepted one. Now, if you say based on the modes of chromatography, you have two types of HPLC techniques. What are those? Normal phase mode and reverse phase mode. Now, I hope you recollect what is normal phase chromatography and reverse phase chromatography. Normal phase, very simply stating, normal phase is where the stationary phase is polar and the mobile phase is non-polar. Correctly speaking, you would say the stationary phase is more polar than the mobile phase. The mobile phase need not be completely non-polar, but it should be more non-polar than the stationary phase. In reverse phase mode, it's just the opposite. Reverse phase, simply stating, you can say the stationary phase is non-polar, the mobile phase is polar. Correctly speaking, stationary phase is less polar than the mobile phase. So you have already, uh, you already know about normal phase and reverse phase. Uh, so we'll go to the uh, Next one, liquid-liquid partition chromatography. It's a relative method uh, where the stationary phase is liquid coated on a solid support. The relative distribution of solutes in between two phases determines the separation of substance. This can be classified into normal phase where the stationary phase is more polar than mobile phase or reverse phase where the stationary phase is more non-polar than the mobile phase. This is what I just told you. This is the diagram for a normal phase chromatography. Observe this is your mixture containing both polar and non-polar solutes. And this is the mobile phase direction of flow. This is your stationary phase. So as you see in polar, what did you observe? The polar solutes are retained strongly. In the beginning itself, they are getting retained on the top of the column. So stationary phase is retained first, mm, sorry, the stationary phase retains the polar solutes very fast right at the beginning and the non-polar solutes, because they are not retained, they move along with the mobile phase down the column. This is what happens in normal phase. If you see the reverse phase, again, the, all these are the same. You have the mobile phase direction of flow you have the two components, polar, the blue one, and the red one is the non-polar. This time, you will see the non-polar getting attached. Here, you also see the stationary phase is a non-polar one. It's, a uh, say, a C18 column with number of C uh, uh, carbon uh, chains. So you have non-polar stationary phase, non-polar solute is getting attracted to it, whereas polar solutes do not have so much of affinity towards the non-polar stationary phase. And that's why the polar, and remember reverse phase, the mobile phase is more polar. So the polar solutes remain in the mobile phase and they move down the column faster. So this is a comparison of normal phase versus reverse phase in HPLC. So you have normal phase, reverse phase. The first one is for normal phase. These are the features. Packing polarity is high for normal phase. Reverse phase is low. You just uh, heard that normal phase has a polar stationary phase. Reverse phase is a non-polar. And that's why the polarity is low for reverse phase. Solvent polarity is the opposite. So low to medium for normal phase, that is mobile phase is low to medium polar, whereas reverse phase, medium to high polarity. 
sample elution order you saw in the uh, uh, just in the animation now the least polar comes out first in normal phase and the most polar comes out first in the reverse phase that is the blue uh, one which we saw in the animation now whereas in this the red one came out first the effect of increasing solvent polarity suppose you increase the solvent polarity uh, in case of normal phase then you will increase the elution time if you are going to uh, increase the solvent polarity then you are going to decrease the elution time why so because in reverse phase the solvent is already polar if you are making it more more polar then you are going to decrease the polar substances are going to come out faster in this case the polar uh, substance the non polar substances which are coming out first they are not going to come out that fast because you are going to increase the solvent polarity the types of hplc techniques based on principle of chromatography you have adsorption chromatography you also have partition chromatography adsorption partition ion exchange size exclusion and affinity chromatography so a brief uh, thing about each of these adsorption is a surface phenomenon where interaction takes place only on the surface of adsorbent the interaction is competitive what do you mean by this because there could be more than uh, one uh, substance which is getting separated the substance which has got greater adsorption affinity towards stationary phase will be adsorbed first and the other gets adsorbed later that is the competition then solute having high affinity towards stationary phase will be adsorbed first compared to less affinity molecules adsorbed solute is replaced from stationary phase by mobile phase now the replacement is in the opposite way the one the solute which has got less affinity towards stationary phase will be eluted first okay will be uh, eluted from the stationary phase first so you can see here high affinity red one shows low affinity this is the stationary phase and this is the direction of mobile phase so you saw what you have seen is the low affinity one moves faster down the column the high affinity solutes move at a slower rate and this is what leads to separation in chromatography the stationary phase in adsorption chromatography is called adsorbent and the types of adsorbents you can have uh, that is the types of stationary phase usually a solid such as silica gel alumina or porous glass beads are used types of mobile phases could be some examples are heptane octane chloroform etc used in adsorption chromatography because the adsorbents that you use here they are all polar so you you need to use more non polar mobile phases other type of chromatography is size exclusion chromatography this is a separation mode based solely on the analyte's molecular size in this a large molecule is excluded from the pores and migrates quickly whereas small molecule can penetrate the pores and migrates more slowly down the column basically what happens is here you have a gel like structure you can uh, visualize something like a sponge where there are gaps in between so there are pores now these pores uh, sizes should be monitored you will study in detail when you study gel chromatography but the size of the pores is kept at a fixed value now you have small molecules and large molecules the large molecules that is which have a size bigger than the pores cannot enter the pores if they cannot enter the pores then they will move with the mobile phase and therefore they will pass down the column faster but the small uh, molecules which are sizes are small smaller than the pores they will enter the pores and then they have to be washed out of the pores so that will require more mobile phase to be passing traversing the column 
So that's why those smaller substances will migrate slower down the column and they come out later. This is an example you can see here. Small one is retained here, whereas the large one cannot go in. So it just moves down. The small one later comes out. It's also often called gel permeation chromatography or gel filtration chromatography. Gel permeation chromatography, when used to uh, determine, uh, is the term when it is used to determine molecular weights of organic polymers. The column is packed with cross-linked polystyrene beads of controlled pore sizes, and it is eluted with common mobile phases such as toluene and tetrahydrofuran. Gel filtration chromatography is the term used when uh, we are separating water-soluble biological materials. We'll study this in detail in that chapter. Ion exchange chromatography, you've already finished with this chapter, so you know something about it. I'm just giving a brief uh, introduction to this. And ion exchange chromat in ion exchange chromatography, the separation mode is based on Exchange of ionic analytes with counter ions of the ionic groups attached to solid support. That is the ion exchange raisins. These raisins are coated on the porous glass bead. Separation takes place by exchange of ions of raisin with counter ions of mobile phase. And as you know, there are two types, cation exchange raisin and anion exchange raisin. I'm not going into much detail here, but I'll show you this pic here. What you see here. Ion exchange chromatography showing the exchange of analyte ion P plus with the sodium counter ion Na plus. Now, what is this? This is the raisin with SO3 minus, that is the negative ion firmly fixed to the raisin and an equivalent amount of counter ion that is sodium. So, this is the sodium form of the raisin. Now, you have P plus in your sample. Now, when this flows, what will happen and this is a cation exchanger because the counter ions are cations so the sodium uh, will come out and p will get attached typical stationary phases are cationic exchange sulfonate or anionic exchange uh, that is containing quaternary ammonium groups bonded to polymeric or silica materials. Mobile phases consist of buffers because pH is very important in ion exchange, often with increasing ionic strength to force the migration of analytes. Because all samples uh, should be in the ionic form for ion exchange chromatography. Common applications are the analysis of ions and biological components such as amino acids, proteins, peptides, and polynucleotides. The other separation modes, we will not go much into deep depth in this. Affinity chromatography is one. Hydrophilic interaction chromatography is another. These are more specialized fields. Chiral chromatography, these are for the optically active uh, compound separation. Hydrophobic interactions, electrochromatography, supercritical fluid chromatography, these are advanced techniques very uh, specific in their applications then now you come to types of hplc techniques based on elution method you have two types isochroatic separation and gradient so you have isochroatic hplc gradient hplc what is isochroatic where the mobile phase composition remains the same throughout the hplc procedure that's isochroatic hplc if the mobile phase composition is going to change continuously over a period of time during the experiment, then it is called gradient separation. So gradient means, suppose you are mixing one polar and non-polar. You start with non-polar one, 100%. Then you, after a given uh, time interval, say three minutes, it becomes 90% uh, of non-polar and 10% of polar. Then again, after another three minutes, it is 80%, 20% of polar. 
Like this, it changes till it becomes 100% polar solvent only. This is a gradient separation. It need not start with 100%. It can start from any 90, 10 to uh, 20, 80, any such ratios. That is programmable in HPLC. Now, based on the scale of operation, you could have analytical HPLC or preparative HPLC. Now, preparative HPLC is a large scale one. What is analytical? This we want to just find out how much is there or what is there. That means qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis. So for this, we need very small amounts of sample. On the other hand, preparative HPLC is a totally different type of field. Our main concentration here is on analytical HPLC. But what is preparative? Here, uh, say it's more commonly used if you have some plant extracts and you want to isolate one particular component out of that plant extract. There are a number of components in plant extracts. When you pass it through a preparative HPLC, you get each of these components separately. Then you can use the one you require. You can collect it separately and it can be used for further studies. That's preparative. So that means basically purifying each component from a mixture. Then based on type of analysis, you could have qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. So as you see, uh, the way uh, the classification is done, the best possible classification is based on the principle of separation of chromatic. Now we come to the another important part of this chapter. This still now what I was telling you was sort of introduction to HPLC. Now we come to the instrumentation and each of these components, what you see here, you have the mobile phase reservoirs, you have something called degasser, then you have a pump, you have a controller which controls the pump, you have the injector, auto sampler, you have something called a guard column, you have a column, then you have a detector, the data system, and going two ways, because what enters should come out. So if after the detector, it will just go to waste. Now we will be seeing each of these components in detail. Sometimes there could be more than one uh, type under a particular category, say a pump, what, which are the pumps used in HPLC? There could be more than one. So we will have to go through each one of these in detail. The mobile phase. It's a solvent that moves the solute through the column. It will also, it's nothing but the uh, mobile phase. It could be one solvent. It could be a mixture of solvents. In HPLC, the mobile phase interacts with both the solute and the stationary phase and has a powerful influence on solute retention and separation. So this is mobile phase. What about uh, its characteristics? What are the desirable characteristics of the mobile phase so far as HPLC is concerned? So high solubility for sample components. So it should show high solubility for the sample components. But it should also show differing solubility for different sample components. Then only separation is much better. It need not show, but it is not required that it should show differing solubility. The stationary phase can show that difference and the separation still will take place. But if both the stationary phase and mobile phase show a difference, the separation could be better. But all the components should be soluble in mobile phase. That is a prerequisite. Non-corrosive to HPLC system components. The mobile phase, because it is going to travel through the entire HPLC instrument. Now, the HPLC instrument, what I just showed, a block diagram, that instrument is called a high-performance liquid chromatograph. See, always... The instrument will be called a chromatograph. In gas chromatography, the instrument will be called gas chromatograph. Whereas the report what you get or the graph or the plot what you get will be called a chromatogram. So do not interchange the two because graph, chromatograph is used for instrument. Chromatogram is for the plot that you ultimately get 
as a result of separation. Uh, coming back to mobile phase, it should be non-corrosive because it passes through a number of components and many of them are metallic in nature. So it should not corrode any components as it passes through. It should have high purity, low cost, UV transparency because this last one is there because the most common detector in HPLC and the most low cost one also, the least uh, expensive is the UV detector. And it is more uh, sort of universal because most of the components, uh, they absorb UV radiations. I'm not telling all, many of the components that are used. So high purity, absolutely necessary. Otherwise, it will damage the column and it will also damage the pumps. So that's absolute necessity. We will be purifying it before using further. Low cost because... As it is, HPLC is an expensive instrument. Running an HPLC is expensive. Maintaining an HPLC is expensive. So if the mobile phase is less expensive, it is preferable. Other desirable characteristics include low viscosity. Why low viscosity? If, it is, if the mobile phase is very viscous, it will not flow at high rates. The flow will be much lower. And that is why you want the viscosity to be low so that flow rates are high. Then low toxicity. There's, uh, the analyst who is using it should not uh, suffer from toxicity problems. So it is preferable to have low toxic uh, liquids as mobile phase. And non-flammability should not catch fire while using it. So these are some uh, precautions uh, it is better to take and uh, choose your mobile face according to these. Now, this is what is a chromatogram. You can see here 6RPLC, reverse phase liquid chromatography, that is HPLC only, reverse phase uh, HPLC chromatograms. These are the recorded chromatograms. So, you will see AU stands for absorbance units. Uh, so, it's a UV detector versus the time of elution. So uh, this is the effect of mobile phase solvent strength on solvent retention and resolution. See the LC conditions for column is a uh, C18 column with three micrometer particle size of stationary phase. The length and the width 75 mm millimeters to 4.6 millimeters that's 0.46 centimeters. The flow rate is 1 ml per minute. The temperature maintained was 40 degrees centigrade. And detection is at a UV wavelength of 258 nanometer. Mobile phase is a mixture of estonitrile and water. Solutes were nitrobenzene and propyl paraben. You can see here, PP stands for propyl paraben and nitrobenzene. Now, when you, they used 100% estonitrile, that is no water was mixed, then they got only one peak. That means these two substances have come out mixed. Next, they used 80% estonitrile. They mixed it with 20% water. You see a separation. Paraben, propyl paraben eludes first, but it is not completely separated from nitrobenzene. There is a mixture. This should have come to baseline for it to have completely separated. This is a better separation because almost baseline, but still some mixture is there. Some percentage mixture is coming out. This is with 60% estonitrile and 40% water. Now you see we are making it more and more polar. 40% estonitrile, 60%. Again, you see it will be mixed. Okay, it is coming out mixed. And you also have to see one more thing. When estonitrile was 100%, how fast it came out within one minute. You decreased estonitrile. The time is increasing. It's still increasing. Look at it here. It's four minutes. It started with one minute. In this case, now it's four minutes. Now you are making it 30% estonitrile and 70% water. Still more polar. What has happened here? Nitrobenzene is eluting first. See the difference here. Here, propyl paraben was coming out first, but it was not 
getting completely separated from nitrobenzene. Here, there is complete separation. But nitrobenzene comes out first and propyl paraben later. You are using a more polar uh, mobile phase compared to in this case. Then you see here, this is 20% estonitrile and 80% of water, highly polar mobile phase. You see nitrobenzene is coming out first and it's coming out as a very narrow peak. This is the most desirable type and then you have propyl paraben. But at the same time, as you have been, you're getting good separations here, but you have to also consider the time. As you're making it more and po more polar, you can see it has come out six and complete separation is around nine minutes. And you make it more polar, it has come out in half an hour, exceeding half an hour, because completely elution is at this point. So it's exceeding 30 minutes. This is not desirable because very long elution times is not desirable. You want a complete separation, but as fast as possible. So out of these two, these are the two completely resolved ones, but this would be preferred. This is not required. Such a big gap between the two is absolutely not required. So this would be the preferred ratio of mixture of the two, 30% estonitrile and water. This is how we choose a mobile phase composition. Different types of mobile phases could be either buffers. You can have acidic mobile phases. You can have iron pairing additives. You can have and high pH mobile phases can also be there. These are used in different conditions. It all depends upon what type of sample components you have. Based on that, we choose any one of these as the mobile phase. This is another pictorial representation. It's a retention map and chromatograms of two basic antidepressants using mobile phases at various pH. I just told you the use of buffers and pH is important in some samples. So at various pH with percentage organic modifier, organic modifier means the organic component in your mobile phase. So that is being kept constant. The diagram illustrates the importance of pH in the separation of basic analytes. And this uh, is taken from Waters Corporation with their permission. So here you can see this is an integration. Actually, the separation is this pH2. Uh, this is to find out the area, okay? So here it is pH 2, pH 8, and pH 10. Now, what do you see in pH 2? Not at all a proper separation. In pH 8, pH control is critical here. pH 8, you are seeing all the three separated. When you make it pH 10, again, you see all of them separated, but you see the time has increased drastically. Now, this was the only problem. This is quite a small peak, but the peaks here are much more better shape. The peak should not be very broad. This indicates band spreading. <coughs> so the desirable one is pH 8. Now we come to mobile phase reservoirs. The most common type of solvent reservoir is a glass bottle. Any uh, a glass reservoir is the preferred one because it's less uh, reactive. Most of the manufacturers supply these bottles with uh, special caps, Teflon tubing, and filters to connect to the pump inlet and to the sparge gas. That is helium used to remove dissolved air. Filtration is needed to eliminate suspended particles and organic impurities. So you see, um, the solvent reservoirs are made up of glass and they can hold up to 500 ml from 500 ml onwards also if required. You could use any bottle, but it should have cap. It should have, uh, be able to pass a Teflon tubing with a filter at one end. So all these are required. 
to uh, purify your mobile face and also make it suitable for HPLC. The main culprit is oxygen from air that dissolves in polar solvents, particularly water. The dissolved gases in the mobile phase will come out at column exit or in the detector, resulting in sharp peaks. They give their own peaks, and that's why dissolved gases must be absent from the mobile phase in it, when you are using them in HPLC. Uh, the microscopic bubbles can change the nature of the flowing stream, making it heterogeneous. So you have gas, liquid, mixture passing through. That's another problem. The peaks can also, uh, but peaks can also occur when these microscopic bubbles gradually collect in the detector cell. So some additional peaks can come because of these dissolved gases. Due to all these complications, we should remove the dissolved gases. And that's done by degassing techniques. Degassing may be accomplished by one or a combination of the following methods. You could apply a vacuum to the liquid. You can do it by heating and stirring. You can do it by sonication. You can do it by sparging. Now, how do, uh, uh, what is the sparging? Because these are the two new uh, words you may uh, be seeing, sonication and sparging. Applying vacuum to liquid, you know that it will uh, suck the dissolved gases. Uh, by heating and stirring, you will, uh, what happens is when you are heating, and continuously stirring, the dissolved gases all come together. They become a big and they will escape. And heating also will remove the gases faster. Sonication means doing the same thing but passing sound waves because some mobile faces cannot be heated, especially when you have mixed solvents. If, if you heat, the more volatile one may volatilize off and the ratio of the mixture of solvents would change. So sonication would be a better option in that case where you can allow sound waves to pass through and sound waves pass through again. There is aggregation of these dissolved gas uh, bubbles. They become a large bubble which is lighter and therefore comes to the surface and then escapes out. Sparging means passing an inert uh, gas through your mobile phase containing dissolved gas. This inert gas will drive out the dissolved gases. And being an inert gas, it is not dissolved, so it also escapes later. So it re removes the dissolved gases, and then it is also not present. So it doesn't create its own problem. Any questions? OK, I'll ask you a question. What is the main difference between HPLC and the normal column liquid chromatograph? Anybody who remembers? Main difference. Why HPLC is a high performance technique compared to liquid chromatography? Why is it high performance? Okay, what is chromatography? It's a separation technique, right? So high performance means better separation efficiency. If you're telling a high perform HPLC has better separation efficiency than liquid chromatography, then why does it have better separation efficiency? So we had a number of advantages, right? So if you remember, the time taken is much lesser. The reproducibility is better, band spreading is less because flow rates can be maintained very constant and fast. Though you have smaller particle size, because we are using high pressure. So these were the various the features of HPLC which make it more efficient than liquid chromatography. So these are all the differences also. Major differences between liquid chromatography and HPLC. Okay, try to read a little about HPLC and come next time so that you will have better understanding.